Welcome back to The Legend of Vox Machina, Season 2, Episode 2. Season 2? Anyways, <laughs> The Trials of Vasselheim. Last time, we got our shit fucked up by some dragons. Um, went back to Whitestone, regathered, regrouped, re-energized, went to Vasselheim, which is like a temple city kind of thing. Your standard religious city in a fantasy setting. So, be interesting to see how that all plays out. Like I said, vaguely know what's going to happen, but, you know, obviously the show is making some artistic, creative liberties. Since I'm pretty sure Pike isn't around for this section, um, you know, we have to we have to include her. There's some characters who were introduced that are not... <laughs> kosher anymore because of the the players that in real world things they've done cancel culture shit like that so it's gonna be interesting to see like how everything plays out who gets introduced when what their roles are and all that stuff so without further ado let's get into episode two <laughs> i can't believe it actually <laughs> <laughs> Guys, stop. No, 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 don't stop. <laughs> well well Oh, she can turn into a big bird now. Do intro, same intro? It's probably the same intro. But let's watch it again. Damn. Remember, we're not here as tourists. Percival Frederick Steinbaum, Musil Kolosky, the Rollo the Third. And I require an audience with the Don Marshals. Well, my name's Rob, and I require a sandwich. You holding up the line? You say today. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> not the bidet. Oh, and the bear wipes. It's outside, yes, we know. <laughs> That's the tree, probably. <laughs> bear aboard. The Platinum Sanctuary will hear your business. Oh, Hi, bear Platinum. I am Pike Trick Maybe this is... A great Bahamut. evil has befallen Taldori. Well, <laughs> is that good enough for you? That is all. You won't help kicked out of a palace. <laughs> We're getting better. Playing dragons? You need the slayer's take. Oh yeah, that sounds familiar. Interesting. I have an old friend on the inside. Zara? Friend is oh. a generous term. If I love Zara. a chance, even a small one, we have to take it. I haven't met you yet. Is that Who, cash? Me? But you, ah, uh, you have those faces. They're they're just so familiar. Where have I seen them before? I... Oh, that's right. It's a bounty. I feel like that's. <laughs> what did you do? Kind of sounds like cash. Right, Grog. Oh. Grog? Damn it. Oh, that's right. Oh my God. Not this. But you are no warrior. Your mind is clouded. Ooh, I'm fighting words. This feels real weird, <laughs> but fuck it. Let's get ugly, Grandpa. Are very close to me. Hey, Z, are you expecting annoying visitors? <laughs> visitors? Yes. And you are still sticking dead things in your hair. Uh. What's the first time we saw each other? As much as I love to chit chat, we're actually on urgent business. I love the <laughs> the bitchiness from both no of them. Sees her, especially not someone who owes the take. I, well. <laughs> oh. I wasn't ready. I'd love to see you try that again after I. Bro. <laughs> Entirely on your sister. You hopelessly seeking your father's love. You wield such a dark weapon, a reliance that proves your frailty. I like this part. This is I love I love little vision quests like kind of annoying. No one cares about you. 
I'm no different. Damn. <laughs> oof, oof. God damn. <laughs> Here we go. That's what we need to do. Stand your ground. <laughs> you have much to learn about being a warrior. Seeking the path to true strength is the first step. Cool. What? The vestiges. I was gonna say. That's kind of like the big part, right? These royal weapons. In the great holy world. Holy relics. I'm quite charming after all. Ooh. I'd say it was nice catching up, but it wasn't. I hope they show up again, recurring like they do in the campaign. Grog! Uh. What happened to you? Oh, an old man beat me up. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, yeah. First round's on. Sure I was going to say, is this Victor? <laughs> You'd be surprised. In fact, business is booming. <laughs> Relax, it's only coffee. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Something wrong. I like the combination of the comedy, like the, the lines that he said, but also like, let's get some plot in there. No! <laughs> Don't kill him off. I shouldn't say great. That's that's kind of BSing. Um, <laughs> it was fine. You know, it, I, I get way where we're going, why we had to do it, but I feel like it was definitely a little bit of a step down from last episode as far as like shock and awe and like getting you hyped. This was more of an informational kind of setting the stage of what what the season's going to be about, you know, their plot, um, and then sort of, like, character development, like, what, is, what do the characters have to, to deal with and sort of overcome this season? Um, obviously, their insecurities and sort of, like, their willingness to fight on and, you know, be heroes, I guess. Um, <laughs> anyways, what I was going to say is, I love the when they mix in like the three D art style to this because it just it just makes it more fantastical. Makes it. I feel like they choose moments when it's like either moments or creatures that are like larger than life, um, and I think it really emphasizes the stakes at hand. You know, um, so like last episode we saw the dragons were all in that sort of three D animation that that the different art style basically. Um, same thing here with the the sphinx. It sort of it wasn't necessarily an antagonistic fight thing, but um, it was definitely a you know legendary creature that sort of towers over them and has has more of a presence. Um, but yeah, we're gonna find these vestiges of divergence. I don't. They said the vestiges. I don't know if they said vestiges of divergence, but very excited for that and what it means. Like I said, I've heard episode three is the one um, the start um i love that grog part I, i'm curious to see what he's supposed to be gaining from that I, i'm not quite sure i understand you know i'm assuming it's like power the, his power is his friendship or whatever you know something like that um but you know it's very cryptic i i love i, love, I don't know if it's ike or ek amadi but he, he's such a great voice actor i love him so much you know he usually does that sort of like very gruff, gravelly, you know, uh, kind of mystic sounding voice. Uh, I think most prevalently he's Javik from the Mass Effect series and Seer from Apex Legends, but <laughs> like he can do other voices too. Like in Guild Wars 2, he plays this little goblin, they're, they're called Asura, but they're these little goblin creatures and they're like very intelligent. And so he's he's got this very high pitched like um, <laughs> sounding voice, and I, I for the longest time I didn't know it was him until I saw a behind the scenes video of it. So like he's actually like a, a really good voice actor, like not even just acting wise, but just like able to change his sound up. Um, anyways, 
enough gushing about him. I'm glad that he's in the show. I hope we get to see a little bit more of him as Earthbreaker Groon. As Grog figures it out, maybe he comes back and like shows what he's learned or something. But I want to see a little bit more of that. Uh, Zara and Cash, like I said, I, I wish... I, I, I want to see more of it, you know? I think I didn't quite get the Zara that I wanted to from this episode. I don't know. There was just something about her that I was like, not... It wasn't giving Zara, <laughs> you know? But also, this is like her first introduction to the show, so... It's not necessarily like, this is her. Um, you know, I, I just want to see that, like, evolution, I guess, of, of the sort of her and Cash. I want to see them show up again intermittently like like they do in the campaign, you know. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do write that in or if it's, it's just, like, a little Easter egg. Like, here, here's some two fan favorite characters, and they got they got a, a little bit of a scene together. But, yeah, you know, like I said, it was kind of a build-up episode. Obviously, Vax is seeking some stuff here. Um I'm sure it's going to be next episode that we're going to come to a head with it, but I, I, I don't want to mention it yet until it happens, but, you know, I, I'm noticing it, <laughs> you know. I love that they're building it up, you know, because it, it's, from a narrative perspective, as far as the show goes, it's good to have it built in and sort of weaving it in a little bit, little bit by bit, but obviously in the campaign, I don't think it really happens until episode three, you know. I don't think that's, I think that's kind of the first time it's like, oh, this is a thing, but I like that we are building up to it, at least here. It makes it more natural. It doesn't make it as last-minute, kind of circumstantial. You know, it, it's good and bad in a way because, like I said, as far as the show goes, it's good to have that sort of narrative structure and the foreshadowing and stuff, but like the campaign, you know, you want those those spur-of-the-moment, spontaneous kind of things to happen. Those are kind of what character building for your, uh, you know, your, your characters to have those types of moments so um you know I, I i appreciate what the show is doing but at the same time i do just want to commend the player in that moment liam for for how he did integrate you know the live elements and you know story moments that happen into how his character evolves you know it's not just like i plan to do it this way um I'm debating going into a tangent about my own character right now, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.